and, and somebody brings all right hello folks we're live. we're live i'm in louisiana and james pumadonna is in new jersey we, we might have some more people joining jean pierre wanted to join but unfortunately he, he didn't have the correct product now um but in a few minutes um beer man is hosting wild card wednesday and so i told jean so well you can go on that and bring anything so um I don't know how thrilled they'll be about a wine, but still, it's wild card. So it's just like wa Joker's Wild Wednesday. You can bring whatever you want to. Joker's Wild Wednesday. Right, uh, right. And and, 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 and and it's like, I think there's a possibility that certain individuals really do not know much about hard liquors and um, and liqueurs and, uh, and wines. And, and they really put all their focus into beer. And there are, I, I think that could be it. I, I, yeah, well, there's nothing wrong with that per se, but- There's uh, nothing wrong with it, but don't don't say you're doing a wild card show. Uh, oh, uh, Ronald's been live for a thousand years. What do you mean? It's, you, you're, Again, you're, I was live, yeah, I was live as recent as yesterday morning. Yeah. Yesterday afternoon twice. But anyway, uh, on my alternate channel, Anti-War. But um, anyhow, I'm in Louisiana, and I have a dessert wine from Italy, and it is called, and the guy next door is cutting the grass, unfortunately. He decided to start cutting now. Yep. A loud lawnmower. Uh, hope it doesn't make a disruption. Here's Encanto. I guess that means enchantment. Encanto. Oh, yes. The Sicilian flag. I, I know it well. And it's a Marsala dry. And it's got this uh, emblem. Coat of arms. Yeah. Fine. D-O-I-P. I'm not sure what that means. D-O-P is the uh, designated origin of production. It's a... Uh, um, I know what it means. Internationally protected designated origin of production. In other words, it it can only be called Marsala if it's from Marsala, Italy, and on the western side of Sicily Island, okay? Yeah, and, and used a special grape is probably used in making it also. It has to follow certain certain uh, government guidelines for uh, Marsala. It says age more than one year in oak barrels. Now, you can buy some Taylor Marsala, but that's not an official DOP. It's an NYP. <laughs> Yeah, that's like the difference, like uh, an American company in Wisconsin uh, selling Swiss cheese, and then you get Switzerland Swiss Emmentaler Swiss cheese imported, you know, and made from certified raw milk from local dairies, and now we're talking about Swiss cheese. Right, so what yeah. this, if you get an American Marsala, it's really American Marsala style wine. Now, uh, we're going to look at these comments real fast. Yeah. Yeah. Anti war. Hey, BC. All right, BC. Uh, you can learn, you know, you can learn and you might enjoy it. The worst that could happen is that you'd hate it and then you'd never have to try it again. Yeah. Well, dessert wine, BC, oh, is, is to regular wine like uh, uh, Southern Comfort is to, let's say, a bourbon, you know, like, or a liqueur is to a, a hard liquor. It's a, it's a dessert wine sweeter it's sweeter and stronger and it'll knock you out faster <laughs> but uh, you gotta watch it um so james what do you have and then we're gonna do some screen share because i'm gonna show you the company i've got oh all right okay oh yeah i forgot to do that i forgot to sorry i just want to say uh greetings to the new uh cleveland capons major league baseball team and also, wouldn't it be funny if someone, someone's family tree had a coat of arms that was an image of a coat with human arms all over it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let me show what I got. I got, it. okay, here we go. I got from- We're gonna highlight it later, Fonseca. Yeah. We got from Portugal, Fonseca Porto, Ruby Port, and I have the website which I'm going to post, and they definitely have a succulent 
line of products. I'll and, do a big uh, share when that's time. Yeah. Fonseco, uh, uh, Guimarães, a product of Portugal, bottled by Quinta or Quinta, Quinta and vine Vineyard Bottlers, uh, uh, Vinhos, uh, in Gaia, Portugal. And I have the website, and I will post it. And and I, I'm very impressed with your large product line of port wines, being that I like port wines very much. So I'm going to uh, uh, James. Uh, I was talking to this lady Monday. She uh, no, it was today. She uh, she does wine sh presentations at grocery stores. You know, has a table set up and works. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I told I saw her there and I said, hey, I can't remember her name. I said, hey, um, <coughs> have you ever tried Marsala? Oh no, she said no, no. But she she I mainly mean, just. You know that they mainly doing Chardonnay, Cabernet Sauvignon, stuff like that. Okay. I said, well, uh, Marsala is a lot different than what you're normally used to drinking. I said it's not like a red wine or a, a white wine. It's a whole different world wine. I said it's the kind of thing that most people either love or they hate. There's not a lot of in between. Oh, she was thinking, you know, but uh, she had never tried it, and uh, I thought that was interesting. She's at least 55 years old and never tried. Yeah, there was, um, when I lived back home in, in the uh, liquor store that I used to take videos of me walking up and down the aisle, and I'm sure you remember that, uh, there, um, they had a tremendous amount of Polish vodkas because Garfield is heavily uh, Polish now, and there was a lovely blonde-headed uh, Polish girl uh, giving out little little demo cups, little little shot glass cups of of the uh the vodkas and everything and uh yeah they um uh, uh the liquor store uh girls are usually very attractive like the auto show girls but uh yeah so anyway yeah they they do that that, that that's old hat they've been doing that for a while um just want to put the variety from the company is, and then the top one is what I brought. Okay. I'm going to jump to that. I'm going to do mine first, and then I'm going to go to yours. So, um, yeah, go ahead. So, um, let me do the screen share. And then I can look up your company and screen share it. Okay. So here's the Kino family Italian tradition. And they're showing the man, Gaetano da Kino. He moved to the United States in 1967. And he went back to Italy. And then he came back here. And then he uh those blue grapes. Then he, there's an old photo with his family, obviously from like a long time ago. Uh, yeah. They're probably uh, growing up and running the company now because he's 81 years old. But he, uh, he, came, he started the Kino importing in 1977, so 44 years ago. In the 80s, daughters Patricia and Sonia joined the family business, Sonia. So they're probably heavily involved now. And uh, his first big client was Trader Joe's. It says Trader Joe's. So, wow. And I bought these. At, yeah, and that's a California-based company. But I bought these at Trader Joe's. Now let's look at their uh, home, Bottega, wines, liqueurs, food products, gifts. They yeah. do all kind of Italian imports. I think it's Monrovia, California. Headquarters. What? Corporate office. Oh, for Trader Joe's? Yeah. Yeah, he's in Duarte, which I don't. Okay, they got, it's in close to Los Angeles. They got all these. The Kino. Della Valpolicella. I don't know what that is. All right, all these wines. Chianti. Hmm. Yeah, it's very dry, it's Chianti. Pretty big. Now there's the yeah, Marsala yeah. Dry and the Marsala Sweet. Now I have the Encanto, which I guess the Encanto is the Trader Joe's version of this. I guess the sweet marsala is ideal for cooking, for making veal or chicken marsala, and for for the flavor of it. 
which yeah. happens to be a very tasty, right. very tasty recipe with the mushrooms and then cooked in a gravy, you know, with the, I guess, olive oil, so on and so forth, more salad. There's the dry. So I think that's their version. And then they, they rebrand it as in Canto for the Trader Joe's store. You know, Trader Joe's likes to have everything in its own name. So they got it. I'm not going to show every wine, but they, there's three pages of wine, three pages. They have food products. Let's look at that real fast. But they have really Balsamic good stuff. vinegar, cafe espresso, cafe decaf, Ooh. cafe espresso organic. <coughs> and mm -hmm. then let's see. It. No, I don't see any sausage. Let's look at their, uh, their uh, liqueurs. There's a amaretto. No salami, but they got amaretto. And then gifts. Well, we're not going to look at all that. But so it's, uh, you know. It's a company that does all that now. So we're going to go to you, but then the name of your is again, read it out to me and I'll type it up. Well, it's well, I put in the private, I put the links. Uh, I have I brought the uh Fonseca uh Ruby Port, which is companies established 1815, and this happens to be 20 percent alcohol by volume. All right, which should take the, 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 the anxiety off of my life a little bit temporarily. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so we have, it has a really interesting, well, the variety page is interesting. This one is, says full bodied and fruity. Uh, introduction Ruby Port is a traditional style of port. And Fonseca have, have been shipping rubies since the company was founded over 200 years ago. Fonseca takes great pride in their ruby, which has remained consistent in quality for over a century and a half. The wine is aged for three years in large wooden vats where they soften and develop without losing their fresh, intense, fruity character and their deep ruby color. Fonseca Ruby is bottled for immediate drinking. Yeah, so you can buy more. <laughs> Deep uh, tasting note. <laughs> Deep Ruby color, fresh, vigorous, and youthful nose, whatever that means. Full of intense cherry and black currant aromas. Full bodied on the palate with solid but well integrated tannins and a long, rich, fruity finish. I, I'm anxious to, to actually drink this. You know, uh, serving suggestions. Yeah, pour it in glass, put lips up to, yeah. It's excellent dessert wine, particularly with ripe blue cheeses or well, any strong tasting ripened cheese. It will be served at room temperature. Now, now, this was in the refrigerator and there it is. And I am going to pour it. Here's all the varieties. They have vintage ports. Myron's Vintage, Quinto, Quinto de Panascal, uh -huh. Wood Age Ports. Wow, they have a huge selection. Yeah, they certainly do. They got the vintage. Yeah, they, they're really super aged. Yeah, 1960 Vintage. I uh, bet you that's not $3.99 a bottle. Maybe three. Oh, no, no. No, it is not. I love these corks, you know, you can, I save them and you never know when you, you might need to cork something. Cork, cork and cap, cap and cork. All right, I'm going to pour it in the favorite wine. Okay. Yes, let's see about it. Yeah. Hey, uh, 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 Masumi, good morning from Japan. I'm watching this talk show this morning. I'm James's friend. Hi, Masumi. To you, I toast. Um, oh, your liquor store doesn't have young women? Nah, well, what are you going to do? Can't have everything, I guess. You got good prices, probably. All Don't right. Go too much. Don't go too far. I know. This is, this is a tad bit stronger than the tailor. Yeah. Yeah, serve at room temperature. You know, if somebody gave it to me at room temperature... Knowing how sophisticated it is, I would still drink it. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah, she she's a very nice woman from outside of Tokyo. So we smell. All right. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna do mine. I'm gonna do yeah. mine. Now, did a, here's the dry. Now I got a great deal on this. Well, so I'm gonna <laughs> take I paid three dollars and ninety nine cents a bottle at Trader Joe's. So I, got, you know, I mean, you basically can say I got two bottles for seven dollars and ninety eight cents total. Wow. I don't think you got it that cheap, that Fonseca. No. No, no, no. You, uh, you definitely are in uh, discount territory. Yeah. Okay. Now you can see it's it's uh, what's that color? Tan, amber, tan. It's like it's like a deep amber. Clear. That's, that's deep. how Marsala is. It's really not a red. No. Age for a year in oak barrels. All right. I don't guess I need to put banners up for today. We only have two so far. If somebody else joins, I'll add in the info. But um, here's the thing about this wine. It's very meaty in the nose. It's woody. There's wood and there's meat. It's like almost like beef bouillon, which you know it doesn't have that. Yeah. If yeah. you're thinking of red wine, forget it. If you're thinking of white wine, you can just throw those out the window. This is a whole different, like BC said, he wasn't used to this kind of stuff. This is a whole different world. You know, this is, um, mm, all right, taste, cheers to you. And sorry, I forgot to let you do the music. No, that's okay. I'm, yeah. I'm I, I know the, the Asian mushrooms also have a beefy aroma. The shiitake, maitakes and all that have a very beefy aroma. Um, I uh, The taste. Whew. Well, I think the key word here would be California golden raisin. You know how you can buy those sun-made and they're the, the, the purple raisins? But if you look on the shelf carefully, there's also the yellow ones. They call them golden raisins. Well, they have a very unusual flavor uh, than a normal raisin. And these have this has that, that kind of strange golden raisin flavor in the wood, and it's very dry. When they say dry, they weren't kidding. It's like you need water to um, hydrate. This finish is crisp if you would use a beer term. The body is medium. I should say light to medium. It's light body, which can be dangerous because you might think, oh, this, this stuff's so light. Let me just knock it back. Oh, no, 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 no. 18% is going to knock you back. I like it. It's well made. I think the Dakino people know what they're doing. They go into intricate detail, just like the Fonseca, about the grapes and the soil and, and how they need the certain sunlight and they only get that in uh the marsala region of sicily and so on you know like you say the violin story but it's not made up it's not pretend it's true. no 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 it's really specified in what, what they use even the raisins even raisins uh, they don't just use any old grape you know they um now you know What's interesting about this, I mean, not the beautiful glass. Oh, my beautiful glass for one dollar. No, I'm not talking about that. The wine. Oh, I did that. Yeah, he did a little bit. I, did, did I, I didn't do the exotic stuff that I do on Fandango Friday, but I did something. You know, I, I, I was in laid back group, so anyway. Um, Besides, last time we had a big panel, and when I played the drum, nobody like everybody stared at me like, like uh, I was uh, from the Andromeda Galaxy or something. <laughs> so, anyway, the aroma. It smells like an ordinary Cabernet or Shiraz or you know, uh, um, it doesn't smell like a dessert wine. But when I taste it, it's another story. Ah, uh, yes. I get the fruity flavors. 
that were mentioned in the description, not including the grape, but that's there too. It is really good because it is not overly sweet. It is very mildly sweet, but in a pleasant way. Like, um, like if you're eating a fresh fruit that's between tart and sweetness. Yeah. Like a lot of tropical fruits are that way. Kiwis are that way. The woodsy um, flavor is there. And um, just like that strawberry wine that Ronald gave me that I, I, I brought to a show, I, I thought it was going to be very sweet, whether it be the addition of a little too much sugar or whatever. But no, no, no. It's, it's relatively semi-sweet, um, dry dessert wine that is not going to make you sick to your stomach. Yeah, I like ZZ Top. She's got legs. She knows how to use them. This is outstanding, and you can easily get drunk on this because of how pleasant the flavor is. Not so much the aroma, which is kind of strange, but... I mean, I can't detect wood. I can't no, tell no, what kind of wood not, it is. Like. Yeah, like, not like the one... Oh, but you can pick up wood, but you, you don't know what type. It's probably yeah, I mean, I'm not going to tell you. It's beech, it's, a, you know, apple wood, it's this, it's that, you know. But, but it is... You can definitely get the wood, the woods, the wood flavor. Like if you were eating some really good pulled pork or brisket or ribs, you know, smoked for 14 hours, you know, you got the wood, yeah, the wood flavor and aroma. But this is excellent, but you have to use discretion when you drink this. Yeah, and, I think you got more than enough right there. I and I think, it. and I think that 20% alcohol by volume is like the best of both worlds. You have the alcohol content. Oh, you like wine. I know she, she knows a lot about sake. That That's for sure. Uh, and the other one, what, what's the name of the one made from sweet potato? Suchu, sochu, sweet potato and rice. Yeah, I've tried only Taylor. But this is port wine. This is uh, uh, from Portugal, Fon, Fonseca, Fonseca. Uh, now, yeah. Best of, yeah, go ahead. That one there runs about twenty dollars. No, I got this for um, a lot less. I got this for. Um, I I usually don't go over um, twelve or fifteen dollars when it comes to wine. I I I go I I pay that for hard liquor. 20 bucks because I have no choice because they price gouge you up here with hard liquors. Yeah. But um, it's the best of both worlds in terms of it being wine for wine lovers, but, and it has a rich flavor um, of, let's say, a liqueur, but it has the alcohol content. That's it. Something of that nature. It's made with sweet potato and rice. And, Rice, I guess, sake rice, which is a sticky rice. So uh, it's really an ideal beverage, alcoholic beverage. You have the antioxidants of a deep red wine, the health, the health benefits. You have the alcohol to get you buzz. You have the flavor for uh, your sipping enjoyment. And... Uh, it's really good. I mean, I, honestly, I like it better than than the um, than the Taylor, but I like the Taylor because I like uh, Concord grapes. Yeah, Con I like the the purple Native American Concord grape. Then there's another Native 
great called Catawba from New York State. There's one called Catawba. Um, but anyway, idea. This is good. I'm trying to look something up for a moment. Yeah. I'm trying, uh, to, see something. I'm trying to look up. Okay, let's see. Madonna is a lucky star. Okay, yeah, I get, I get it. Madonna's a lucky star. Well, I, 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 I don't have the... Uh, Midori is honeydew melon liqueur. Yes, I have had it. It is green. It is green like the pickle... The, the pickle well, I'm not going to say it. Anyway, what, um, where did Fart Doctor, gastroenterology say? He said something. He, saying, he said... Uh, gastroenterology? Excellent. No, he said, excellent review. I'll have to try Fonseca and Taylor Wines. It, it, it really is. Well, the Fonseca, I'm telling you, is, is better than Taylor. Uh you know, Concord or no Concord. It's a, it's more co complex, more sophisticated, um, not as uh, overpoweringly sweet. Uh, now there's a Fonseca. Is it Fonseca or Fonseco? Fonseca with an A. Font, F O N, okay. like Fonseca. All right, because right. right. they're showing one on Trader Joe's website. It's a uh, hundred nine dollars and ninety nine cents. They have one for forty six ninety nine. It's a twenty year old, and then there's the Ben twenty seven for thirteen ninety seven. Thirteen ninety seven. So that's that's the three ranges they have. So you can you can get one for thirteen ninety seven or one hundred nine ninety nine at total well, one. The one hundred nine ninety nine uh, is aged how long? Does it say? No, I said vintage. That must be one of those old vintages. So. Majority. Yeah, I believe it is honeydew melon liqueur. It's, uh, haven't seen, you know, I haven't seen that in the little airline bottles because some liquor stores don't um, make it their business to stock all of the samples, airline bottles, which I think is, is great for business because it gives people a chance to try something before they splurge, before they spend too, too much money. Yeah, 190. It's like Earl Shive. I'll paint any car for whatever the hell. Nine, 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 nine. Uh, yeah, I went there once and it was worth about nine dollars and ninety. Talk about a ripoff. Anyway. <laughs> All right, I'm going to get my score, and then you can give your score. Now, I don't remember what you said for price. You said it was less than 20, but I didn't. No, it was under 20, definitely. You know, you don't have to give the exact price if you don't want yeah. to. But uh, I, 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 th I, th I tossed the uh, receipt in the dry, in the dry uh, uh, kitchen uh, pail. Oh, okay. And so I'll be able to, I can retrieve stuff without it being all gross and nasty. Yeah. So well, it doesn't matter. But I mean, um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't like spend a great deal of money on, um, on nothing. this. Yeah. Cause I had to, you know, I had to get other things. I think Taylor, Taylor Port runs about what, about 1099? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I believe it's an 18 percenter. Um, 18, yeah, but it's American. And they have Madeira. Madeira. I'm sorry, I left them. I left Madeira out. Madeira, Sherry, Port, Marcel. Right, that's right. Um, I really like mine. Now, if you want a wine that's sweet, you're not going to like it. This one I'm talking about the uh, the uh, Encanto, the Enchanted. Also sold as Dakino, I guess, but Trader Joe's wants everything rebranded more or less. More or less, not totally. But uh yeah, 
if you like dry wines and you like powerful wines, 18%, you might love it. Um, for three dollars and ninety nine cents, it's like the best value out there. Let me tell you. Mm -hmm. oh. I'm digging it. Boy, it's finishing dry though. Woo wee! You could cook with it. If I was scrambling eggs tomorrow, I could pour some of that on there. It would give it a really interesting flavor in that uh lard. But uh, I, I think a a, a ninety three would be a fair score. Uh, I might be going too low, but I think this company must know what they're doing. I don't know how they can get away with selling it so cheap, but uh, whatever the case, um, it might be only they might be only making twenty cents a bottle or whatever. But uh, they might sell a lot. Trader Joe's is a big store. But anyway, uh, yeah, I, I'm keen on it. So ninety four out of one hundred. Um, I don't know what you're going to score yours, but you seem pleased with it. Well. This does have a dry finish. It goes down, the initial sip is, is fruity, and it goes down. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. Remember when Ralph Cramden got drunk off of grape juice? Him and Ed Norton. So uh, anyway, um, it goes, it has a dry, a very dry finish, a fruity uh, initial sip flavor. But because this is supposed to be classified as a dessert wine port, I I will give it a high score. But I think it, it can be more full-bodied and fruitier, uh, being that it is a dessert wine. Now, um, Ronald... Uh, <coughs> No, that's not his name. Ronald Terrio was right. The amount I poured is starting to give me a buzz. No, uh, I've had other Japanese plum wines. You're thinking of Kikoman. They also, uh, not Kikoman, uh, 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 Geikikan. Yeah, Geikikan, uh, sake and plum wine. You're thinking of the soy sauce, Kikoman. Kikoman. Right, Kikoman, Kikoman might make wine too. I don't know. You never know. Yeah, Geikikan is is you know nationally advertised uh, somewhat but i've had the other ones from japan and they're really good but it, it can't be the grape some of them will say grape wine flavored with, plum right with plum what? right you want 100 percent plum you want 100 percent plum wine and i noticed that by reading the labels a lot of them said grape wine flavored with plum don't get that uh this i will give it a 98% out of 100, only because I think it can be fruitier and less dry. But then again, I haven't had any of their other dessert wines. They Like like Ronald uh, read off, they have a, a very large product line. But you, so might go bro you might go broke trying them all. Uh, well, yeah, well, that's not going to happen, but... I think an introduction, you know, just like uh, what's the reasonable Johnny Walker? Is it the black? The red. The red is the reason, the one that yeah. they say, yeah, you can mix it. Yeah, you can get that for uh, about 20 bucks. I know where to find it for $17.99. I know where to get it for $17.99. It's a three year age blended scotch, but I like the Johnny Walker red. Well, what were you going to say about it? Well, Johnny Walker, well, it, it, uh, Johnny Walker does have the low end price wise items you know um uh, that uh they're probably they're not single malts i think they're blended but but they're good you know it's uh yeah now this, uh, i mean try try the taylor port try the taylor port uh, uh grand imperial high exalted mystic wizard of gastroenterology try it it's good I agree. But this is excellent too. I'm not saying it's bad because I gave it a 98. So um, uh, it's it, it, it's drier than the typical dessert wine. So the 98 doesn't mean that I'm putting it down or bashing the company. Um, it is more sophisticated than a tailor or any any 
made on the West Coast or anywhere in the United States. I mean, I was surprised when I tried the the uh, American uh, version of Bailey's Irish Cream from the Black Button Distillery in Rochester, New York. Oh, right. That that I was shocked, and and, and the and the rum chata for the first time was excellent. Uh, you know, trying things new, but um, yeah, a certain a certain someone who will remain very nameless, uh, said that, you know, it's easy for Mr. Terrio because he gets all those dirt cheap, fantastic discounts uh, down in uh, Louisiana. And it's not always easy for other folks in other areas. I says, well, that's the way the crab cake crumbles, I, mentioned. I said. That's it, you know, everybody's got something. Uh, and, and you know what? It's really great to be able to get discounts on. Uh, right, on, I'm not gonna. I mean, I'm sorry, but I'm not gonna complain about it. I mean, I'm sorry. I wish everybody could get those discounts. When I tell y'all how much I got that Doers 12 year age Scotch for, people are gonna flip their wig. They're not gonna believe it because yeah. um, they're gonna think it's a lie. But it isn't a lie. It's the truth. Yeah. But then again, you you could you end up, you could end up paying more in other ways. You know, everything balances out. Uh, high, no, not always. Um, I think it's like uh, Heaven Hill, perfect example. Low cost American bourbon, excellent flavor, low price. Now, uh oh, don't do it. Now, um, <laughs> no when to say when. Now, um, as far as promos, as far as promos, um, I am going to say that, uh, the next dessert wine I've got coming up is the blue. Let's see, the, the dry is the red label. And then I've got the blue label, which I can wait on that because I got this uh, white wine in the fridge that I need to drink before it goes old. But I've got the, the, uh, the sweet, Marsala sweet. So I bet that's going to be really exciting. And... That's the one that's good for cooking. That's the one that's good for making chicken or, or veal. Or sweet. The sweet, yeah, the sweet one. And then you got all the, uh, um, uh, um, what is it, Amato's uh, Winery, all the fruit, the fruity wines. Now, tomorrow morning at dawn, I don't know anything about Amato's, but I'll, I'll uh, I believe what you're saying because you know more of it. Well, the strawberry wine you you got. Oh yeah, mottos, yeah. But I've never tried them. You have it. I live in Louisiana. And I've never tried them. I was at the store today and I saw a mottos peach wine. Oh really? Oh wow, peach. They you should make a persimmon. Wine. Being that they're down south, they should make a persimmon wine. That should they be might. interesting. They make the strawberry dry. I mean, I'm sorry, strawberry semi sweet. The strawberry sweet. They make blackberry, peach, and uh, I don't know what else Amato's makes. Blue? Okay. Blueberry. That would be a good one. Yeah. Now, tomorrow morning at dawn, I've got a Canadian whiskey, Canadian gold. It was $9.99 at Trader Joe's. Uh, it's been pretty good. It's a strange flavor. It's a strange flavor. I don't know if it should be called Canadian gold, maybe silver or more likely bronze. But, uh, you know, you know how these companies are. It's a Canada's finest. Oh, yeah, sure. That's why it's nine ninety nine. Uh, Absolute finest. Wow. And then I got heir to the throne. I don't know what throne they think they're going to inherit, but I'm pretty sure they're not going to knock crown the crown the porcelain, up. The porcelain throne. Yeah, that's about it. Because uh, <laughs> this, this stuff is so obscure. If they thought they were going to knock Crown Royal off the throne, they were in a dream world. But it, uh, I got it for half price at Walmart because they couldn't sell it at the full price. I, I think they barely sold it at the half price. I got a little bit left. It won't be much of a taste challenge. But I, when I do these things, I like to go through each one. I do every one, and I make it a round-robin tournament. So I, it's everybody's got to go against everybody. And you get some surprises in there, I'll tell you that much. Yeah. Kind of like the, the the game we played at Michael Komarov's uh, right home. He had that was so inter interesting. He had it so detailed. Yeah, he kept the he kept the craft beer a secret. 
he gave everyone uh, about this much in their glass. Everybody smelled it, tasted it, tried to guess the alcohol content, con con content, content uh, and, and, and reviewed it, gave it a percentage. And then when everybody was done, he brought, he showed the, the beer to everyone. And I got, and I got one right. Uh, I said, this tastes like a victory beer, victory. And then he said, ooh, and it was. And I, I hadn't had a victory beer since 2014, so I was so proud that I got it nailed, especially when I was trying to calm down from being stressed out by, you know, all of that. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, 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 yeah. Torrential rains and traffic. But you, that's pretty good that you guessed the victory after all those years. Yeah, seven years, and I some I kept drinking it, and I was thinking to myself, I said, this tastes like a victory beer, and I said, I better say it before they reveal it, because then they'll just say I made it up, but I didn't want to say it, because I said it might be breaking the rules, remember, I said, I don't want to say it, because it might be against the rules to reveal what you think it is, so after they reveal it, I said, I knew it was a victory beer, I said, but of course, I could be lying, because, I mean, but I wouldn't lie about that, uh, now, Friday night, Friday evening is Fandango Friday liqueurs. I've got my party bucket. What a whole oh, that's when stuff. You close your eyes and you put yeah. Like, I got like you're playing uh, dominoes, like you're playing dominoes. That's right. And I got 19, I got 19 bottles left, and I don't know what flavor I'm gonna get. I don't know what's gonna come out of that when I reach in well, there. Do it like do it like the bingo game. You close your eyes and stick your hand in there. I need to try Cotillion the Saint Le Lamvinus. Yeah, Cantillon, Cantillon Saint Lamvinus. I have a bottle. I have a bottle. 2011 in my cellar. Uh, outstanding beer you would appreciate. Uh, well, with that name, I'm I'm sure I would appreciate yeah. it. Uh, I, I think those come from Belgium. Yeah, uh, very that's, expensive. they're very very expensive. Is that a wheat? Or is that right stand there? Uh, they're Barley. like wild yeast ales. Oh. Um, there, um, there are, um, I was, I was reading an article about um, uh, basic uh, education for beer beginners. And it, I mentioned that there's something there's, it was either a lager that used yeast for ales or the other way around. Like, like, like sometimes they'll, they'll mix methods. Yeah, use like, for lager. Yeah, cream, yeah, cream ales, like Genesee cream ales is like a lager ale hybrid. It's like a lager that uses ale yeast or vice yeah, versa. Yeah, that makes it taste a little unusual. Um, um, any promos for you? Because we're about to get off. Yeah, no, nah, you know, uh, like Fandango Friday's coming. Uh, that uh, that's this Friday. The don't forget to stay tuned or participate. You can always go to the liquor store and buy some airline bottles. You know, you don't have to splurge and buy big bottles of liqueur or flavored uh, whiskeys. Yeah they're, so easy. yeah, they're so easy to find, so uh, doesn't yeah. take a whole lot of effort. Um, now, you might live in Utah or some restrictive state like that. Okay, well, maybe it's difficult, but uh, we don't. Um, next Wednesday, I'll probably be doing solo because people are going to probably say, uh, oh, Lord. But uh, <laughs> I'm doing Old English brand 800 malt liquor. And uh, next Wednesday, I bought my 18-ounce bottle already. Which is kind of an unusual size. A bottle, it's like a beer and a half. Wow. And uh, yeah, it's like a 18 ounces. You know, a regular beer is 12. So it's like a beer and then half a beer. It's kind of strange. But uh, then the Wednesday after that, this is a James P. Madonna idea. And it's uh, double IPAs, Imperial or Imperial IPAs. Right, which is what, 14% alcohol or higher? To be imperial? Well, uh, I don't think, I think it's like 9% or above, something like that. But it's got to be strong. You know, it can't be some little little weak kneed thing, you know. But no. I've got a niner, I've got a niner and, uh, from uh, 
Lagunitas, Lagunitas, uh, it's called Colossal Maximus IPA, Colossal. Wow. Colossal Maximus. Maximus. Wow. That, that, that better be, have a really big, bold flavor. It does. Right. And oh. you've got one too. So, uh, and I guess a lot of other people will join us for that. So what is, uh, is that a pickle puss uh, vodka nearby? So you can, we can have uh, uh, some laughs. Or is that you have to get up and go tra travel to get it? It's close. Hold on a minute. The old, old pickle puss vodka with artificial coloring to make it more green. At least Sazerac. I'm glad that wine's not affecting you at all. Um, well, I, it's a musical glass, so I had to. I know, I'm just joking with you. Um, you talking about Naked J? <laughs> not referring to you. Naked J, Big Dill, <laughs> pickle flavored vodka. At least Sazerac is kind enough to tell us that they're adding artificial coloring, although the law, the law states you must say that. So I guess they're not that kind. Uh, it says uh, distilled from grain. And we know that's corn. Yeah. Bottled by Sazerac Company, Louisville, Kentucky. Certified color added. Contains yellow number five, which they have to put that because some people are allergic to yellow number five. Uh, I'm obviously not. Avoid direct, look what it says here. Avoid direct sunlight, color may fade. So we don't want to put it in the direct sun or the color will fade. Well, I didn't have it in direct sun. I had it in direct freezer. Color may fade or or like um, aspartame under heat turns to formaldehyde. Yeah. 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 We don't know. We don't know what's going to happen. Let's see if they got any other. Uh, Commentary? Madonna's on the borderline, right. You <laughs> be the lucky star all right then he says you know those pintos those are the ones that used to explode or were they the vegas the chevy vegas pinto the pinto if you hit them from behind it and oh the vegas ran hot they had like an aluminum block engine or there's too much aluminum involved the, the, the dashboard my, my mom had one the dashboard used to get really hot the Chevy uh, Vega, yeah and they would leak oil like crazy they were pretty cars yeah yeah the the worst one not for not for not for safety concerns but my grandfather because he used to have Nash ramblers back in the day there's the the pickle the Naked J uh, Dill, Big Dill Pickle Vodka. Yeah, Nash Rambler, which became American. Yeah. So he, he so he went and bought, because of his memories of his Nash Ramblers, he went and got a uh, American Motors Gremlin. Uh, and and um, let me tell you, that, that thing, you felt every bump on the road. It was, you needed Dramamine in order to ride in it. A gremlin and a what? No, he uh, was a a gremlin and a pacer, which was a like a big bubble. The big bubble, yeah, the pacer. It was yeah. wide. It was it was it was almost wider than it was uh, long. Yeah, and and the, the suspension system was horrible. I mean, you it was almost like you you were on cobblestone streets. It was, you know, every little bump was bang, wham. But you know, I read a lot about I read a lot about American Motors Corporation, who was bought. They got bought by Chrysler in 1987. It was the biggest corporate buyout in history at that time. Well, the Jeep, right? That's how Chrysler started making Jeep. Chrysler wanted to buy AMC because their technology was actually more advanced than the other auto companies because they were small. They were the, the fourth largest, and they were way behind at number four. So they had to do things they couldn't really. Have, afford to advertise a whole lot. So they, they had to innovate, like come out with all this advanced technology. And Chrysler wanted that. They were like, nah. they wanted that advanced technology where they didn't have to develop it. Yeah. And then they, they, they wanted the Jeep. 
Well, the luxury car was the Matador. The Matador, yeah. And, and then, um, my well, my grandfather had a 19, 1959 or 58 DeSoto, which was made by Chrysler. And it had put push button automatic transmission. It was yeah, on the way. The was actually a separate uh, division. Yeah. And it was discontinued in, I think, 1961. It was like Plymouth, Chrysler, yeah, Dodge, DeSoto, but DeSoto didn't really uh, work out so well. Right. Chrysler's answer to Cadillac and Lincoln was the Imperial. The Chrysler. The Imperial, yeah, the Imperial. And then AMC had the Matador, and then their sports car was the Javelin. And uh, their uh, basic car was the Eagle, Eagle Premier, which Chrysler also wanted, but they didn't do much with that. But Chrysler wanted the Jeep so bad, so they got it, and they've made bank on that. You know, they made a lot of money. But then Chrysler turned around 10 years later, and they, they got themselves bought out 11 years, 11 years later. So Chrysler, Chrysler no longer is an independent company. They're owned by Fiat and Renault. Renault. Oh, wow. Renault, Renault, Renault. Renault. I remember when Ricardo Montalban was uh, advertising the Chrysler Cordoba with rich Corinthian leather. Yeah. Rich oh, who could forget those commercials? <laughs> yeah. And they had the music. Da -na -na, da -na 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 -na. Uh, a box Takata. Da -na -na, da -na -na -na. Yeah. With anyway. Anyway. We're gonna right. say, we're gonna sign off. Okay, let's see. Last comments. Lee Iacocca. Lee Amakuku. <laughs> Lee Amakuku. Oh, he started with Ford. I think he he developed the 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 Ford Mustang Mustang, Mustang uh, when it was when it was good. Although uh, Dan Tanner of of Vegas, Robert uh, Urich. God rest his soul was driving the vintage. Uh, I think it was a T Bird, the two passenger Ford Thunderbird. Oh, yeah. Well, the Thunderbird was the was like Ford's answer to the Corvette, but it was a bad seller as a two seater. And then in 1960, I think, or 61, they went to a, a regular four seater. And then Thunderbird got really popular when it became like a fancy Ford. You know, all that. But uh, yeah, when, when William Conrad of Cannon started driving that Lincoln, uh, what was that? The, uh, no, that I was. No, was that the Thunder? Uh, the, a Thunderbird or was that the Lincoln Mark IV? I'm sorry, it was the Lincoln Mark IV, which is all. Um, yeah, uh, the Cleveland Capons is the name I came up with uh, because they're. They're they're turning their back on tradition and they're becoming uh, pusillanimous pipsqueaks. Yeah, the guardians. What a name to inspire the the masses. The guardians. Right. Wow. Guardians of idiocy. All right. The Hakawis. <laughs> R, you have just departed from this two-man spacecraft, and it's not, it's not, uh, uh, it's not Mr. Bezos. No. We're not going into the high atmosphere and claiming we're in space. Oh, yeah, 12, we're 12 miles from the actual outer perimeters of of the earth's gravitational pull we're, we're we're in space like like cnn says well what what a uh what a historic event uh the beginning of commercial uh, uh uh flight into space and meanwhile they're 12 miles from actually being in space or where they were up there for what five or ten minutes 
What an achievement. If it was an achievement, they would go like in 2001, a space odyssey to a, a space station and then go to the moon and find a monolith. Now watch what happens when, when they're ready to actually break free totally of the Earth's gravitational pull. Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, or the guy from, what is it, the British guy from Virgin Atlantic are not going to be on, they're not going to be on the craft. They only, they only went up there for, for the little, uh, PR. yeah, but it's like putting your, it's like going up to a jacuzzi and just sticking your, your, your toes in it and not actually getting in it. So anyway, yeah. uh, anyway, uh, I want, I want those guys to go to the moon and find a monolith that was buried, that was intentionally buried, intentionally buried four million years ago. And they have picked up between China and Russia or whatever te te uh, telescopes that photos were taken of, of craft, not craft, I'm sorry, structures on the moon that were not naturally made. They're not part of the lunar terrain, and there's a lot of and, and no, nobody, no one has really, no one really knows what's on the dark side of the moon either. I've got a book that's very strange. It was written in 1888. I can show it to you real fast if you want to see it, and then we'll get off the air. Yeah, all right. Just dark someone, side gave, of the moon. someone gave me the book and said, "Don't tell anybody about this book." Well, I'm telling you. Twang it, twang it. Actually, I think it was this more controversial book he told me not to discuss. So I'll read it. that's like the Book of Shadows. I'm reading it for the second time. Um, and not witches and warlocks use the Book of Shadows. Open the pod bay doors, Hal. You know I. That's right. Pandora's box is about to be open right here on the Ronald Terrio's uh, Joker's Wild. Now here's the book that this man gave me. I'll highlight myself. Then we're gonna get off the air. Oh, oh! Does it mention the Kabbalah? I bet. Okay, so. This, this is a 1938 printing. This is from 1938, but the original came out in 1888. Here's the lady that wrote it. She was born in Russia. Oh, my goodness. Is that Ayn Rand? No. No, it's not Ayn Rand. She, she, she doesn't look too happy to, to get photographed. Whoops. I got to show the right page. Yeah, she looks very... Blavatsky, The Secret Doctrines, Cos Cosmogenesis, Genesis, Cosmogenesis, Science, Synthesis of Science, Religion, and Philosophy. Adyar edition. Now, she claimed this from Adyar, India. She claimed, you know, that she had these angelic beings talking to her called D Diane Chohans, and they were giving her the secret doctrine, all the, all the uh, Gnostic knowledge back to the uh, beginning of the, uh, the beginning of the beginning. And that she said, we were in the seventh, we were in the seventh age, I guess you'd call it, but she didn't use that term. So that's like the angel Boney Maroney visiting uh, Joseph Smith of the, the Mormon Church. Yeah. So she uh, she uh, she said that the moon the moon gave birth to the the earth in her book. <laughs> she said the moon is older than the earth. She said a lot of people erroneously think the earth is the moon is the earth satellite, but she says no. Well, if it, it's the same thing. If, if the earth broke away from the moon, one can say that the moon also broke away from the earth. So, so in other words, they were, they were one. Maybe an asteroid hit the, uh, 
her her theosophical her theosophical society had very bizarre uh, ideas. Well, she looks like she is very fond of the moon by looking at her photo. She is yeah. a creature of the night. She died in eighteen ninety something, but uh, but anyway, she said we were in the seventh uh seventh uh what you say stage of whatever we were in and that uh we weren't totally evolved yet but we were heading toward a more elevated elevated uh consciousness yeah because uh, uh, i don't know about how elevated we are now today but it's almost like we're we're going through de-evolution regressing Uncle yeah, well, you talked about that in the book I, I i didn't say i believed anything in the book i just said it was interesting to read it you only could read about three pages a day to understand it she called them she called those recyclings manvantaras and she said we were in a about you know uh it's just too much to talk it's very uh it's it's an it's a gnostic book she says it's, it's an occult doctrine Yep. No, he doesn't have to do a second closer. That was just a, a an epilogue that I did. But anyway, if you want to read a very bizarre book, read The Secret Doctrine. And she goes into all this detail about what the uh, number pi means, 3.1422 divided by 7. She said um, that's got a lot to do with more or less everything. And uh, she goes into all this stuff that was written by Hermes and metaphysics and well, I don't have the second book called Anthropogenesis is about the the uh, the development of mankind but that's that's a strange okay let's see what these people say it says Madame has followers in India to this day yes I knew a man that was part of her following yeah of seance frauds yeah she was talking to the Dion Chohans and Dick, Dixie Baseman says, bizarre, that's putting it mildly. Her and Crowley were bat, crap, crazy, and evil. Yeah. Do you know yeah, that Crowley? I would, I would not argue against that. Did you know that Crowley opened up portals that he did not close? And that's the reason why so much chaos is going on, uh, according to the, the uh, psychic and mysticism world, that there are portals that have not been properly closed. And, and evil entities have entered uh, this world that should not have, which, uh, oh, the only pie I care about is pumpkin pie, by the way, but Isle of Fire, Alice the Crowley, yeah. Yeah, they were trying to uh, square a circle. All right, anyway, thank you, James, for uh, joining, and uh, I uh, hope we have a good time Friday and it was very interesting and I loved it. And I, I think you had a great wine and I would like to try the fun sake of wine one night or one day. And I think I will. And I have, I have a, a plenty of liqueurs uh, for Fandango Friday, including uh, one for uh, this Friday. Uh, energy cannot be created or destroyed, but only transformed into one form or another. Now, when, when people, let's say, the reason why dolls are often haunted uh, with negative entities is because they're hollow. They're shaped like humans, but they're hollow. But you cannot set it on fire like a Ouija board who, which had a portal that was open but not properly closed, like you're supposed to say goodbye. You can't just burn it because the energy in the object has to go somewhere. You can't, you have to use what they call holy fire. And the uh, the exorcist bishop who makes appearances on uh, um, the ghost adventures, uh, uh, Brian, he told me that uh, personally, he told me that you have to do make holy fire, which is a, a series of prayers, like Psalms, like, like doing an exorcism. You have to recite these prayers and then set the object on fire because you don't want 
the entity to go someplace nearby, you know? And a lot of people open portals that they shouldn't be doing, especially kids that think they're having fun and they're, and they're reading from a black magic book. Yeah, and they're talking to Captain Howdy. And they're talking to a captain, another version of Captain Howdy, and then they, they get into trouble. Then all of a sudden, their home is demonically infested. Yeah. And that's that. That's, that. that's the lesson, the extra bonus lesson you guys got. One of Aleister Crowley's later disciples was sort of like expelled from his coven because Crowley said he was a fraud and a hustler. And he said, I don't trust this guy. And that guy said, well, uh, forget you. I'm going to go start something called Dianetics. L. Ron Hubbard. But he was one of those Crowley followers, in fact. L. Ron Hubbard has a very haunted home. There were negative entities in California. In Southern California, yeah. They, 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 they visited, the Ghost Adventures team visited L. Ron Hubbard's house. And it's really heavy, heavily infested. Yeah, I could talk about that for two hours straight without notes, but we better not go into it. Yeah, that's uh, another talk show. Yeah, well, y'all take care, everybody, and have a great night. All right, bye-bye. Good night. Good night, Ronald. Good night.